electric cars. Now, in 2024, it would seem as though a new one is arriving every single week. And the latest is this, the Polestar 4. Now, a lot of those electric cars, they're all very similar. But in the case of this car, it has a USP, something that no other car has currently got. Now, to find out exactly what that is, make sure you carry on watching this video. But in the meantime, please do consider subscribing to my channel. So, what's all the fuss about this new electric car then? Well, it's the Swedish brand's fourth model and, funnily enough, follows the Polestar's 1, 2 and 3. And it'll sit between the 2 and the 3 in terms of positioning. The 4 is a big deal for Polestar, as, like with the 3 SUV, it's a design completely of their own making. It isn't derived from a stillborn Volvo concept. It arrives later this year and will take on a wide range of EVs, from the new electric Porsche Macan and Audi Q6 e-tron to the Tesla Model Y and Kia EV6 GT. But before I show you this car's USP and reveal just what you get for your money, let's take a look around the exterior. Let's start off at the front because the 4 really shows a new look for Polestar. Now the 4 looks very different from the 2 and the 3, most notably with the headlamps. They take some key design themes from the Polestar precept concept, most notably this dual blade design. And the design themselves is really, really intricate. It's like a, a piece of jewellery in there. It's absolutely Beautiful. Now, another thing you'll notice is this panel here. Now, on the two and the three, it's called the smart zone, and that's where all the cameras and the radars and all the safety systems are conveniently located. But on the four, the cameras and the sensors are dotted around the front of the car. It gives it a much cleaner look. Now, focusing on this area, the badge, this can actually illuminate. And that might sound a little bit crass, but in typical Polestar style, it is very refined and very, very classy indeed. Now, Polestar is calling the four an SUV coupe. And I have to say the words SUV and coupe normally make me wince because let's face it, an SUV coupe is normally heavily compromised. Style is always prioritized over usability and practicality, but that's not the case with the Polestar 4. Now, before I show you how practical this car is, just look at the design, because this really does look like a coupe, doesn't it? Especially with the wheel at each corner stance. And it's just so smooth and unfussy down the side, isn't it? Especially the deployable door handles, these wing mirrors, again, so beautifully and simply designed. But this car's USP is to be found round at the back. Have you spotted what it is yet? The thing that makes this car so different, it's USP. There is no rear window whatsoever. Now I have to be honest, when I first saw press photos of this car, I didn't think this kind of worked. It looked a bit awkward and a bit difficult, but in the metal, this is a really, really lovely piece of design. And the thing I like the most about it is it really looks like a coupe from this angle. Now, one of the reasons for that is this roof line. It carries and extends all the way down here. There's no flick up. There's no hint that there's a boot here whatsoever. It's just a really nice, rounded and organic looking shape. Now, in typical Polestar style, it's all very simple. We've got this lovely LED light bar that looks so sharp and so clinical, just cuts across the waist of the car the Polestar logo there, and these little ducks here, all to help the aerodynamics of this car. Now, you will notice there are two little cameras up there, and that's because, quite simply, there is no rear window. Now, why has Polestar not given this car a rear window? Well, you'll get a better understanding of why in the back seats. Under the bonnet, there's a small space suitable for storing your charging cables, but things get much larger in the boot. There's 526 litres of space, which expands to 1,536 litres. And because there's no rear window, you can load items right to the roof. It's like a small, very boutique van back there.
Welcome to the back seats of the Polestar 4. And this is where things get really, really exciting. Because let's face it, in most coupes, you get the sense that the backseat passengers have been forgotten about. They've got the raw deal. They're the ones who are crammed in the back when you take your mates to the pub. But that's not the case with the Polestar 4 because look how much space I've got. Look how much leg room I can luxuriate back here. And these seats in the UK, they will come as standard with reclining seats. And you can just get so comfortable. Now the thing I like the most about this car is the headroom and that's what happens when you remove a back window apparently. I've never really considered it but Polestar have really opened my eyes up to this because when you take away the back glass it allows you to extend the roof line way back beyond the occupants heads. It really gives you a lot more headroom and it gives this back seat interior a kind of kind of a, a lounge-like feeling. Now, one of the reasons why this car feels a bit loungy is the material. Now, Polestar developed a new material back here. It's like a sports mesh. It's something you probably find on a really expensive pair of trainers, and it just feels and looks really nice. Not only is it on the seats, but Polestar have used it round the doors, um, and it extends all the way round behind you as well. There's ambient lighting back here as well and into the doors. Look how millimetrically perfect all of this is. It's absolutely beautiful. You can change these lights as well. More on that a little bit later on. Now this panel back here, you can lower it. If you, you do that, if you wanted to lower the back seats and uh, use this car's full practicality, but with, its, with it in its raised position, I feel like I'm sitting in a first class seat on a jet. This being a Polestar, there's a strong emphasis on sustainability. That gorgeous tailored knit textile consists of 100% recycled polyester. The interior also features bio-attributed Microtech vinyl. The seats use animal welfare secure Nappa leather. Even the floor mats are green as they're made in part from recycled fishing nets. And all the materials used are made to fit, so there are no offcuts, thereby reducing waste. All Polestar 4s are made at Polestar's factory in Hangzhou Bay in China, which uses green electricity and a higher use of low carbon aluminium from smelters using hydropower electricity. Now it's not just people sitting in the back who are going to have a nice time because people up front will just look at this interior. Isn't it lovely? Now it's got a very different feel to the Polestar 3 and that's quite appropriate really because that's more of a family SUV. This is a sporty coupe SUV and that feeling of sportiness is exacerbated by this centre console. It's much higher than you find in any other Polestar. Now I always love the driving positions of the 2 and the 3 and the 4 is no different. You tend to sit very low down, plenty of adjustment in the steering wheel. It just feels a very sporty, very involved place to be. Now a big difference between this and the Polestar 3 is this screen. Now in the 2 and the 3 it is a portrait design. Here it's been flipped around and now it's landscape. But despite that, you still get this fantastic Google-based operating system. And not only does it use Google, but look at the design of it. You can see the software engineers at Polestar sit very closely to the exterior designers, can't you? Because this also is really interestingly designed. It's just so visually appealing, isn't it? All of the menus are really easy to use. It just looks so great. Now, I mentioned earlier on the ambient lighting. Now, you'll really like this. Now, to change the ambient lighting, you don't just go into the settings and change between purple, green and blue. That is way too boring. With the Polestar 4, you get to choose between planets. Yes, really. If I click this button here, we're currently uh, in Jupiter. Now, let's change it to Uranus. Now that's a blue colour, I really like that. And uh, the average temperature on Uranus is minus 195 degrees centigrade Celsius. Didn't know that. Anyway, aside from that, the sense of quality in here is superb. Of course, the same um, mesh, woven mesh fabric is used up here. But just look at the way it's integrated, nicely scalloped into the dashboard. 
it feels though everything in here is designed with a purpose and it's just so visually interesting it's a real departure from this car's rivals which tend to go for very stark design and the last thing to mention is the rear view mirror you're probably wondering why on earth is that there if there is no back window well that gives you a live feed from those cameras mounted on the roof it's not new technology we've seen it in cars like the Range Rover Evoque and various other JLR products but here the camera quality is really very good indeed there's plenty of adjustment as well in terms of brightness and the position of the cameras but if you don't want to look out the back and you actually want to converse with your backseat passengers you can do that easily by just flipping it down and now I can see them all happy luxuriating in the back seats. What's powering this SUV coupe then? Well, the 4 has the honour of being Polestar's fastest production car to date. The dual motor model gets 536 brake horsepower or 400 kilowatts of power, allowing for a 0-62 mile an hour sprint time of a stonking 3.8 seconds. The single motor version is more modest with 268 brake horsepower or 200 kilowatts, and its motor powers the rear wheels. Both cars are badged as long range due to their 100 kilowatt hour battery, which gets 22 kilowatt AC and 200 kilowatt DC charging capability. Bi-directional charging capability is included, as is a heat pump, while vehicle to load will be added later. In terms of range, Polestar claims 376 miles WLTP for the single motor and 360 for the dual motor. If you want your 4 to look like this car, you'll have to fork out £4,000 for the performance pack, which adds 22-inch wheels, 4-piston Brembo brakes, Polestar engineered performance chassis tuning and gold brake calipers, seat belts and valve caps. How much is all of this going to cost you? I know that's exactly what you're asking. Well, prices for the long range single motor start at just under £60,000. Online ordering has already begun. If you put your order in now, you should get your card around August 2024. Are you as excited about this car as I am? Let me know what you think in the comments box below.